It was September 17, 1925 in Mexico City. A public bus like this one collides with a trolley car. 18-year-old passenger Frida Kahlo suffers catastrophic injuries. A broken spinal column, pelvis, collarbone, rib cage, right leg, crushed right foot, and an abdomen and uterus pierced by a metal handrail from the bus. Rather than die as some doctors predicted, Frida Kahlo survived to lead an extraordinary life with a broken body that she would paint to express her pain, often from hospital beds after 38 surgeries that all but failed to relieve her agony. She painted about the accident and often in graphic detail how it robbed her of her reproductive capacity to have children. Much of her work self-portraits, telling friends, I paint myself because I am so often alone and because I am the subject I know best. She would succumb to years of pain at the age of 47 in 1954. Dare to be different. But not before becoming an international symbol for living life to the fullest. Dare to be happy. No matter the obstacles. Dare to be she taught women to love themselves for who they are. Dare to be honest. For example, above Kahlo's piercing eyes and her self-portraits, she accentuated her trademark unibrow. And as seen above her seductive lips, it was clear she was not a woman who waxed. And she would become an unlikely fashion icon, wearing simple but vibrant village dresses to honor her mother's indigenous roots. That landed her on the cover of Vogue. She smoked and drank and cursed like a sailor, and was considered a feminist icon long before there was such a thing in Macho Mexico, before women could even vote. When her famous painter husband Diego Rivera carried on extramarital affairs, she carried on her own with the likes of Trotsky to dancer Josephine Baker. Sixty years after her death, her spirit still inspires admirers young and old. Though just where her fiery grit and determination came from had remained all but a mystery to the public until the discovery recently of thousands of her personal photos locked and hidden away for half a century at her lifelong home in Mexico City known as the Blue House. More than 200 of these intimate family photos are now part of a traveling exhibit around the world, most recently held at Tijuana's Centro Cultural. Visitors lining up outside the door here for a rare glimpse into Kahlo's past, at all the people and events and photographs in her life that helped shape it, and that influenced her mesmerizing work. To begin with, her father was a photographer. One of the exhibit's organizers in Tijuana, Mario Echeveste, tells CCTV that Frida Kahlo's father, himself a noted photographer, was one of her earliest and greatest influences, a young bohemian named Carl Wilhelm Kahlo from Germany who so detested his stepmother that at 19 he left home and sailed alone for Mexico, quickly changing his first name to Guillermo upon his arrival. Guillermo Calo became well known for his portraits of noteworthy Mexicans, among them then President Porfirio Diaz. Though friends said Guillermo's greatest pleasure was seemingly his own self-portraits. For example, this nude he snapped of himself that was a bit scandalous at the time in 1892. So basically her father was like taking selfies of himself back in the day. Yes, yes. There are many selfies he took. Uh, let's see, Frida. So when you do your next selfie, thank trailblazers like Guillermo Calo, who taught daughter Frida to follow in dad's footsteps. Learning how to make an image, you know, impact image. Frida Calo from an early age had grown accustomed to being photographed from her childhood through her teens and after her bus accident, a painful period said to have turned Guillermo old and gray almost overnight, and Frida would ultimately paint her father. Another moving section of the exhibit, the broken body, that gives visitors an up close and personal look of Kahlo's many stays in hospitals, and how yet through the pain of a twisted frame, she found beauty. For example, allowing herself here to be photographed in a playful and rather sultry pose during one such stay by noted photographer Nicholas Murray, who was also her lover for over a decade during her stormy 
on-again, off-again marriage with Diego Rivera. Though Kahlo, till the very end, said her heart had always belonged to Diego. One of the exhibit's more popular photos, this one of Diego that Frida had smacked with her lips. Or quirkier photos Frida took like this one, she simply called Diego's Eye, that she would incorporate a number of times in her paintings of Diego as her watchful mentor, lover, tormentor, and soulmate. And in her personal collection of photos, visitors catch a glimpse of others who shaped her views on life. From impoverished Indios that were a part of her mother Matilda's roots, to Mexicans who fought for independence. Two images she collected of Francisco Pancho Villa, Lenin and Stalin, and the Communist Party of which she was a lifelong member. Frida Kahlo was inspired by and collected the works of other great artists and photographers at the time, and for anyone she didn't like, she'd cut herself out of the photo. But to most who knew her, she was the must-see cool cat to visit in Mexico. And all these recently discovered personal photos underscoring her coolness that remains today. Totally cool, she's like a hipster. An original, not a fake, who posed but wasn't a poser. And you know, sometimes you think, oh, she was a poser, she just wanted to look Mexican. But actually, she grew up with this tradition, you know? She was wearing long skirts with the embroidery, with the tradition from Oaxaca. So you got to see the family, they were in their, their traditional outfit. So she grew up in this tradition. She wasn't a poser. Do you think she knew how cool she was? I think she knew because she got the chance to, to meet artists, Hollywood stars. So they all come to Mexico City, ending up in La Casa Azul with her. And for sure, she got compliments from people from all over the world. Mexican-American couple Arturo and Rosie Ramirez drove four hours from Los Angeles to see Frida's photos that they say left them feeling almost as if they'd met her in person. I never think I see something like this. Beautiful. Never. Beautiful, incredible. It was like a, it was like a, it was a dream. Trust me, a dream for me. Father was a very handsome man. Frida admires Ruth Linick and Sue Berger made the short drive here today from San Diego. The idea that this was a hidden cache of photos for 50 years was just amazing. Photos hidden away under lock and key in a bathroom by Diego Rivera after Frida's death. Rivera instructing friends not to release them publicly till long after his death. They're fascinating people. They're incredible artists. She's had an amazing and difficult life that was um, you know, really fascinating that she was able to overcome all the things that she did overcome. She had a great deal of strength. She went through some terrible times and she was a very individual woman with very a lot of determination and didn't seem to care what the world thought of her. She did her thing. Yeah. The woman with the broken body. Frida Kahlo's favorite motto was long live life. While she died too young, she lives on through her paintings and now her photos. <laughs>